This is a quick tutorial on subcutaneous injection of testosterone cypionate. Sterile technique is important to understand. There's bacteria all over every surface on the countertop, on the diaphragm of the bottle, on any surface that you can touch. And in order to follow sterile technique, you must absolutely not touch any sterile portion of equipment to an area that is not sterile. So I like to make a little alcohol pad bed that can be used to set down sterile items on without breaking sterility. Here we have a 1 ml Lorlock syringe. <clears throat> this is the sterile end right here. So I'm going to open it from the non-sterile end. And this sterile Lorlock has no bacteria inside of anywhere that I can touch. So you have to never touch that to something that has bacteria on it, something that's not sterile, like the outside of these packages or the tabletop. I can set that down on my sterile pad. <clears throat> this is an 18 gauge loader needle. 18 gauge is fatter in diameter and good for loading the viscous testosterone cypionate. So I place that without touching anything to the lower lock or the hub of the 18 gauge pink hub is sterile. I put it on the lower lock. It's sterile, touching sterile, and I twist and secure. Okay, then I set this back down on my sterile pad. I open up an alcohol pad, and I clean the top of the diaphragm of the testosterone cypionate bottle. And once the vial is clear, I can set it back down. Now, nothing that is non-sterile will touch that. I take the cap off of the 18-gauge needle. I put some air into the syringe and I gently puncture the diaphragm with the 18 gauge needle, turn it upside down <clears throat> so that you can see the fluid level. Here you can see the markings on the syringe in increments of 0.1. So there we have 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. First thing you're going to do is inject air up into the bottle to create a little pressure in the bottle then you need to move the bevel of the needle down into the fluid. So we're gonna back that out just a little bit. And now we're going to withdraw the plunger of the syringe and you'll bring in the viscous yellow appearing fluid medicine and bring it all the way down to full. Now we wanna put 0.8 mLs into this. So you're gonna find the 0.8 mL marker right there. And now you're gonna put the this base of the hub to the point eight. Now you want to make sure you get all the air out of the column. Usually there will be a bubble of air within the column of medicine and in order to remove that turn the syringe vertically until the bubble reaches the top. Then you're going to inject that air back up into the bottle as such. So you're going to inject back up in and you're going to watch that plunger go to the point eight right there. And then we'll remove this from the bottle. I can set this down, set this down and we will cap our syringe but I'm gonna cap it. Now there's a tip about capping. Some people miss and stab themselves. If you just set the ca uh, cap on the needle and then tilt it up and let it fall down, then safely secure it, twist it off. I can set that back down on the sterile field. I can open up a 27 gauge half inch needle, which is very small and almost painless through the skin. Again, sterile hub into sterile lower lock, not touching anything, secured and I now have a syringe preloaded with the proper amount of medicine. You can go ahead and finish preparing your syringes from the whole bottle until you have, depending on your dose, between 10 and 13 syringes pre-filled. You can stare these in a dark climate controlled drawer and you're ready for your administration finished product should look like. The entire contents of the vial have been 
drawn into the syringes and capped with a sterile 27 gauge needle. You can store these in a dry climate controlled drawer such as your bathroom drawer. I'd like to mention one other thing about administration and I'll demonstrate that with an unloaded syringe. When you administer subcutaneously, I would like you to pinch a good inch or two of subcutaneous fat, typically in the abdominal wall is best. It is best practice to insert the needle directly into the skin, well below the skin into the subcutaneous fat so that you're not injecting too close to the surface of the skin. If you inject too close to the skin, you can develop a red hot discomfort inflammatory reaction, which is not ideal. If you inject into the subcutaneous fat, sometimes you'll feel a little inflammatory nodule, which will resolve after 24 or 48 hours. And here is a diagram to demonstrate this.